And can you talk about this passion that there seems to be in Calcutta for everything yeah. political? Well, I must tell you that by birth I am not a Calcutta. I came to Calcutta when I was 15 years old. And the very day I came to Calcutta, I fell in love with Calcutta for very many reasons. I was deadly scared of Calcutta being in a sprawling city. And I was also deadly in love with Calcutta for the simple reason that I felt that I was very close to the world. That was it. And in addition to that, I had my, my sort of association with the political activities in those days. And as a student, I couldn't escape it. I had to take part in the political activities. And since then, I was awed by Calcutta, a kind of reverential fear. I had reverence from Calcutta, for Calcutta. I had also, you know, deep... Uh, I had some, you know, I was scared of Calcutta. It works both ways. And over the years, you know, a lot of things had gone by. And as I stand now, I see that Calcutta acts both as an irritant and as a stimulant to me. I get irritated by very many things which I, which I experience in Calcutta, which I would have never experienced elsewhere outside Calcutta. And I have also very many reasons why I feel stimulated by Calcutta. So I have become a part of what it is, the Calcutta, because of its unpredictability because of its meanness, because of its greatness. That is very special of Calcutta. I had been all over the world, but Calcutta fascinates me in so many ways. Many of my friends and even my actors, I remember one actress, Smita Patil, who was working with me at that time. And she told me, Manalda, you must be needing a good deal of patience to be able to live in Calcutta. I said, well, I have the patience, and uh, the patience and also impatience, both these two things have made me love Calcutta. That, that is what it is. But what about this passion that seems to be there for politics, for everybody, you know, from whether it is a, a college student or it's a, a, a worker in the factory, there seems to be a political process that seems to have fall, gone into the grassroots level of Calcutta. Well, that hasn't dropped out of vacuum. It has a beginning, it has a genesis, that is what I feel. So we perhaps inherited it from the, from the, from our predecessors. It, it goes on and on and on and on. And then we have also developed our own visions and own ideas about things, one, our own attitudes about things. We have been critical about our predecessors. We have, in the process, we have developed our own ideas about the politics that rules Calcutta and uh, in a way it is a kind of hereditary acquisition the political passion which we talk about so this is what we got from our predecessors it is the same with our culture we talk about the people talk about cinema in Calcutta well I would say that Shotujit Ray, for that matter, hasn't dropped out of vacuum. He is also the extension of a culture that was there in the beginning. And I'm not a sociologist, I'm no historian, so don't you take me very seriously, but I have a feeling since Calcutta was the, was the, the capital of British India to start with, so there was a kind of interaction between East and West and it started in Calcutta. That may be one reason why, in spite of the fact that we were being ruled, we were, we were colonial people, we were colonized, but uh, we have also got something out of it because of the interaction between, <coughs> between the West and the West. You know, coming to cinema, there seems to be a broad spectrum of cinema in Calcutta. There is the existence of people like Satyajit Ray, yourself, and Rithik Hatak, and other young filmmakers who make very serious cinema. And then there is commercial Tolligan cinema. How do you find this coexistence? Well, that is everywhere. <clears throat> that is not only in Calcutta. You find it everywhere. In, for instance, in Italy. In Italy, when, when after the war, 
there was a big movement, a very dynamic movement called neorealism. But a lot of bad films were being made at that time. So the same thing happened in, in France. So in the same way, in a very small scale, something like this is happening in Calcutta for the simple reason that Calcutta is not outside this planet. So that is what is happening. But, uh, you know, I have a feeling that Calcutta, for that matter, Bengali films are being overpraised because we make a large number of bad films qualitatively and quantitatively the large number of bad films and very few good films. So what about the... the what are, okay. How do you think this uh, popular cinema, it uh, contributes to people's entertainment? Where do you think it really appeals, the popular Bengali cinema? Well, I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm a very bad... Um, you know. All right, let, let's talk about something that you have an idea about. That's, that's Calcutta Theatre. How much do you think uh, the theatre of Calcutta influences? At a certain point of time, maybe uh, it started with, with uh, uh, you know, the IPTA, Indian People's Theatre's movement, that was at its highest peak before, the <clears throat> before independence, during the Second Great War. So it has its golden period. Uh, IPT, Indian People's Theatre Movement. And that created a sensation all over the country. And you can't imagine that uh, it became an all India phenomenon. It started in Calcutta, but then finally it remained, it became an all India phenomenon when, when and where you find a lot of people from outside Bengal also participating in it. And I remember to have seen a dance number which used to be called Gandhi Jinnah meeting a king. I, you can't imagine that, that a subject like this could be a theme of a dance number. So it is all about a Gandhi Jinnah meeting and it failed. And the whole country was, felt terribly paralyzed. So and then again they said that we need Gandhi Jinnah meeting again. So that was the thing at that time. So there were a lot of other things, theater for instance, it was also, had a, it, it, it built a new aesthetics at that time. But then again, what happened? So before the war and after the war, before independence and after independence, before independence, it was much too easy for us to know who were our enemies and who were our friends. So at that time, the aesthetics that grew, that had a certain tenor. It was more or less towards agit prop line. But after independence, it was much too difficult for us to know who are, were our enemies and who were our friends. But <clears throat> still then, after independence, we had the hangover of the IPTA legacy. But there were a couple of people who just broke away from IPTA. One of them is Shomar Mitra, who was very articulate and he built his own theatre. And he was doing an excellent job. And then we immediately we treated him as our enemy because we still suffered from the hangover of IPTA legacy. IPTA played a historic role before the war, but after the war it was very important for the theatre people to change their aesthetics, to change, change their approach because of the political situation, which was very complex. So, and uh, over the years we have the theatre people in Calcutta, they have undergone a terrible crisis, a fight, and finally they have arrived now. And uh, even ten years ago, the, the theatre that was being uh, produced, the theatre in Calcutta, used to be very good, excellent. But then again, I don't know what has happened today. The theatre is going down, down these days, except for a few uh, plays which have been very well produced, that most of the plays are just ordinary. And there are always ups and downs everywhere, in all spheres, so why not in cultural movement as well. What about so, the, the, the Maidan in Calcutta? You always, people come there and see that you get free entertainment. What, what have you... What well, is that area? is during, during winter. In winter time you find the people, the underdogs of the people, of society, they go there and they have the dancers, songs, and you find the acrobats, dancers, singers, and all of them, and even the religious discourses, and the people collect there. But you find, you don't find the, 
the educated middle class to be there. But you find the other people, the most of the, I mean, the majority of the Calcuttans that go there, they, they make it their habit they, to go there, to listen to them, and they don't have to pay for that. And so this is very interesting. So whenever any foreigner, whoever has come here, he has found it to be excellent. You know? And this is what, uh, nobody can escape it. Now you are making a film, I hope you will have a small sequence on the Maidan during winter. It is happening everywhere. When, when Louis Mal came here in 1967, and he had a long sequence on what happened in Maidan.